All right, YouTube. Today we're gonna to be analyzing this circuit. And what that means is first, we're gonna be solving for the equivalent resistance of this circuit. We're also gonna be solving for the total current coming out of this battery, as well as the current and voltage through each of these five resistors. Now, if you go searching on the internet, there's a lot of different ways that people will approach analyzing a circuit like this. But what I wanna to do today is show you just a real simple way to go about first solving for the equivalent resistance of this circuit and then finding out whatever else is going on at each one of these components. Now, anytime we're taking a circuit and trying to reduce it down to its equivalent resistance, what we need to do is start finding groups of resistors that are either in series or parallel with each other. And the drama with this circuit is that if you look right here, you'll see two resistors which appear to be in parallel with each other. But remember, parallel graphically, like in math class, does not mean parallel electrically. You'll notice if a charge right at this point was to pass through this 2 ohm resistor, later it would have no choice but to pass through this 3 ohm resistor. Well, that means they're not in parallel. They're in series with one another. So by combining these two resistors as though they're in series, we can reduce down the circuit. Now combining these two resistors in series, we can come up with the equivalent resistance not of the entire circuit, but of just these two resistors. See, looking at these two resistors as though they're in series, we can find their equivalent resistance, which works out to be 5 ohms. Now, realize that's not the equivalent resistance of the entire circuit. All we've done is just made this complex circuit just a little bit simpler. But now that we've simplified the circuit a little bit, we're going to play the same game again, and that is we're going to find two resistors that are either in series or parallel with each other. And if you look right here, you'll notice there are two resistors that are in parallel with one another. So combining these two resistors, using our equation for resistors in parallel, we find these two resistors have an equivalent resistance of 2.5 ohms. So now we're left with these three resistors, which much like our original two over here, are actually in series with one another. And we find this entire circuit has reduced down to the equivalent resistance of 7.5 ohms. And now that we have the equivalent resistance, we're actually gonna start over here and work our way back this way to solve for the current and voltage through each one of these original five components. Now to do that, we're gonna start right here at our battery hooked up to this seven and a half ohm resistor. So you applying Ohm's law, we know there's nine volts hooked up to seven and a half ohms of resistance. And doing the calculation, we find there's 1.2 amps of current coming out of this battery through this circuit. And now that we know the total current coming out of the battery here, we can start working our way this way across our little diagrams in order to figure out what's going on with the individual resistors. See, we know there's this much current coming out of the battery, which means on this diagram, there's the same 1.2 amps coming out of the battery. Now you'll notice there's 1.2 amps, which must pass through this one ohm resistor, then through this two and a half ohm resistor, then last through this four ohm resistor. Well, these two resistors are two of our original resistors. So we know there's gonna be 1.2 amps passing through both of these original resistors. And now that we know the resistance and the current through each of these resistors, we can solve for the voltage across each resistor. So looking first at the one ohm resistor, we know there's 1.2 amps of current passing through a one ohm resistor, which means the voltage across resistor number one is 1 1.2 volts. Similarly, looking at our four ohm resistor, we've got 1.2 amps passing through a 4 ohm resistor, which means the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor is 4.8 volts. 
But going from this diagram to this diagram is typically where people will get stuck on this problem. And I'll show you why. See, we know the voltage across this one ohm resistor and the voltage across the four ohm resistor, but to analyze anything else that's going on in here, we need to know the voltage across these five ohm resistors. So I'm gonna show you the trick that you need to recognize in order to successfully get through this problem. See, along this wire, the voltage never changes. So if there was nine volts of potential coming out of the battery, that means at this point right here, there's nine volts of potential before some charge passes through this resistor. Now we know 1.2 volts of that charge, or potential I should say, is getting used up in passing through this resistor. So that means this point right here, there's only gonna have 7.8 volts of potential left. Now, working our way backwards from the other side of the battery, we know there's zero potential for any charge moving back into the battery. Working our way backwards, that means there's zero potential right here, just after the charge has gone through this four ohm resistor. Well. We know the charge loses 4.8 volts in passing through this resistor, which means the potential right here is 4.8 volts. And if you look at what we've done here, we've puzzled together the difference in potentials or the voltage between this upper wire and this lower wire. So there's three volts across this five ohm resistor and across this combination that was five ohms. So if the difference between these voltages is three volts, then there's three volts across this five ohm resistor, as well as this combination right here. Now immediately, if we know there's a five ohm resistor with three volts across it, we can apply Ohm's law. And we find there's 0.6 amps passing through this five ohm resistor. Now to understand what's happening with the last two resistors, now to find the current and voltage through these last two resistors, we need to think about what's going on anytime we have resistors in parallel with another set of resistors. Now to find the voltage through these last two resistors, we need to back up to right here and look at really what's happening anytime two resistors are in parallel with one another. So you'll remember, when resistors are in parallel, the current splits. Some of the current goes this way, some of the current goes that way. Now because, and only because, these two resistors have the same value, that means half the current's gonna go down through this five ohm resistor. That's 0.6 amps, which we found here. That means the rest of it, again, 0.6 amps, is gonna go through this resistor over here. Now this five ohm resistor is actually this two ohm resistor and three ohm resistor combined in series. So if there's 0.6 amps flowing through this five ohm resistor, there must be 0.6 amps passing through this right-hand side of this circuit over here, which means there's 0.6 amps through both of these resistors. So now knowing the current through each of these resistors, we can use Ohm's law to solve for the voltage drop across each of these resistors. Looking first at the two ohm resistor, we find the two ohm resistor has a voltage drop of 1.2 volts. And looking at the three ohm resistor, six tenths of an amp passing through a three ohm resistor uses up 1.8 volts. So while every circuit is its own unique little puzzle, anytime we're trying to analyze a circuit, we need to first go through and reduce that circuit down to its equivalent resistance, then work backwards to solve for the current and voltage through each individual component. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.